Good morning, friends. It is early and we are gonna go head down to the garden and do a massive garden harvest today. I have a really fancy birthday dinner I'm going to tonight, so I have to get down there, get as much out of the garden as I can, come back and get ready. So whatever we don't get to today, we are going to come back tomorrow. And my parents are actually gonna help tomorrow because we're gonna do, save the potatoes for tomorrow. But I know there's a lot of stuff in there and I kinda wanna get some of the weeds under control, so it's gonna be fun. So I have my car packed up and let me show you what I am bringing down to the garden. First off, I have a knife. I don't know where my harvest knife is and so I'm bringing my nice bread knife. Remind me to bring it back because I am the per notorious for leaving stuff out in the garden. We have four baskets. Hopefully that's enough or hopefully I can fill them. I don't know which is worse if I ran out of baskets or if I don't have enough produce to fill them. So we have four baskets. These baskets I've gotten at Goodwill just over the years. This one is a beautiful handcrafted Amish basket that was a gift. It's all hand woven and everything. It's beautiful. And I love this basket. And then here I grabbed a paper bag just in case we need it. I need to collect eggs. I have my harvest apron. This is called a roux apron. I can link it down below. I'll show you how it works. I absolutely love it. And I haven't had the chance to use it yet this year, so I'm excited. I packed a little lunch because hopefully we'll be down there long enough that I'm gonna need a little lunch. And we got all of our gloves. I'm just gonna keep this in my car so that we have gloves when we need them for harvest. I am a gardener that likes to wear gloves. I buy these, there's a hair at Costco. They're really cheap. It's a pack of, I think like 12 for, you know, seven bucks. And I can throw them in my washing machine and I absolutely love them. So let's head down to the garden. To say I'm excited to be here would be an understatement of the year. I almost could get emotional that I now get to spend the entire morning and afternoon in my garden. It's been a busy, busy few weeks and, or months, I should say, and I just have not been able to spend any sort of quality time in my garden. And today is the day we get to. All right, so this is my harvest apron. I like to have this on while I harvest so that I don't have to constantly run back and forth to the basket if it happens to not be right next to me. I have a couple of these because they wash up really well and they, they do get dirty because you're putting, you know, garden fresh produce in this big pocket. So I have, I think four of them. Two is plenty, but they were gifts in my PO box. And so I like to put this on. We're gonna get all of our baskets out. I think my goal today is to do some serious weeding, but that's lower on the totem pole. So probably number one, harvest all the onions. Number two, harvest all the cabbage. Harvest any tomatoes and tomatillos that are ripe. Any summer squash that's ripe and green beans that are ripe. And I can already see in the midst of this craziness, there's gonna be some good stuff out there for us to harvest today. Even though it looks crazy. Probably shouldn't be wheeling around a knife. All right, let's get some gloves on. Oh, it makes me so happy to be out here today with you. It's what my heart needed. All right, let's get out there. Oh, probably we need to harvest as many herbs as we can today too. Maybe an extra pair out. I'm gonna go move my car. We're gonna get to filling these baskets. I just took a stroll through the garden. Tons of emotions are coming up right now. One, I'm finding some beautiful things that I had given up on. I haven't been in the garden in probably a week. And so there were things in here that I was like, ah, total loss, total loss. And they are not a total loss. They are, exploding and then there are the emotions of oh my goodness how have I let this get so out of control one thing that is a failure we're gonna start right off the bat this green stock and this has nothing to do with green stock this is 100% my fault you have to water it it's uh, it's not on irrigation and this green stock is completely dead I'm embarrassed to say that because 
it's embarrassing. It was looking really beautiful. You saw what it was looking like, and right now it looks terrible. The other thing is, though, what's kind of interesting, this one died, but the strawberries look pretty good because I have been trying to water them. There is a few dead leaves in here, but there are quite a few plants that are thriving in there, so I am happy about that. But this is something that I had given up on, were these green beans. The deer keep eating them down, but I think they've gotten established enough and they're starting to produce flowers. I think we're gonna get green beans off them. And I was thinking I wasn't gonna get a year's worth of green beans, but as long as these produce, we're gonna hopefully get some green beans. I was getting a little overwhelmed when I was walking through trying to decide where should we start. I think I'm gonna do the same concept that I typically do when I'm doing any like organizing or cleaning. And we're gonna start with something easy in order to get a win under our belt. And that is gonna be the celery. I definitely think I grew enough celery this year to get us through the year. Here is our celery and it looks so good. We started from here to here from seed and from here over, those were starts we purchased. I'm also gonna get in here and harvest any of the cabbages that are ready. So we're gonna have fun in this bed taking it back. These red cabbages are just starting to form heads, so we won't harvest the red cabbage today. Oh, but there is a couple green ones in here. What I've decided to do here is make my life a little bit easier when it comes to preserving this celery. I'm cutting the top part, majority just leaves on the top here off, and we are going to give this to the chickens to enjoy. And that way I'm not trimming the whole entire celery stalk, bringing it inside, trimming this off, and then giving it to the chickens later, I'm gonna go ahead and just do it right now. I could absolutely save all of this for stock, but I have enough of it, and whatever leaves are left, I'll save for stock. So the chickens have not had very many greens in a while, so they're gonna enjoy eating all these greens best part about having chickens is nothing goes to waste and they're gonna have fun eating that I'm walking around again getting overwhelmed so I'm putting my focus glasses on let's focus at the task at hand and let's check something off the list that's gonna make us feel productive so we officially harvested our first celery of the year. So there are a few kind of blemishy type spots on there. We'll go through and cut those off when we go to preserve. So you can see, even though I cut a bunch of leaves off for the chickens, there's still gonna be plenty for me to make stock out of. With celery, if you cut toward the end, but you leave the heart of it still there, it will start to shoot up a second batch of stalks. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to cut right toward the base, leave that intact and see if we can get some more celery to come out of there. Oh, there was two plants there. While I'm in here, I grabbed another basket so I can get the cabbages. I'm gonna cut the plant at the base and leave the stalk in there. And that's gonna go to the chickens. The reason you wanna leave the root end in the ground is because that will break down and produce really good organic material for the soil. I'm gonna cut right here. I could just put that there to compost in place, but I would rather have the girls enjoy a nice green treat. 
Some of these we need to clean off the outer leaves. There's definitely some damage, but that's okay. I think maybe, well, I don't know, maybe on this one it's too bad all the way through. It's kind of slimy. That one, that one's gonna go to the chickens. That's okay. That one looks really good though, once you pull those outer leaves off. Beautiful. Out of this bed, just along this one little strip, we got this whole basket of celery, and we were able to get an entire basket of cabbage from here over, and we did have a couple that we had to sacrifice due to rot. So I'm gonna clean all of this up, and I'm gonna give all these green bits to the chickens. I probably could plant no, I know I could plant a second planting of beets or something in here. Radishes, lettuce, spinach, something along those lines, but I won't be here to harvest it. So what my goal in this is to clean this up and make it look really pretty. So that's what I'm gonna do. And while I was in here, let me show you something I found. This was another thing that I completely gave up on and I was shocked when I saw it. I planted cucamelons along this trellis, oh, I don't even know, months and months ago. I thought they all died. And all of this green, this is all cucamelons. I've never eaten a cucamelon before. There is a baby cucamelon. I just completely gave up on these. And they're growing all the way up our straw flowers. So. Uh, in the next couple weeks, we'll probably be able to taste some cucamelons. Let me taste this one right here. It's kind of big. I don't know how to know when it's ripe or not, but let's try it. Let's see. I think it's ripe, actually. It tastes like a cucumber. It tastes like a cucumber. It's good. It's really good. Let me show you something that is disgusting. We do not have vine borers or Japanese beetles, but we have massive slugs. And that was living in my squash bed. There is another one. That is the reason why some of my uh, cabbages are all moldy. It's another one right there. I'm disrupting their habitat. I grabbed my really, really big stainless steel bowl that we can put all of this chicken scraps in. Walking over here, I got distracted by weeds. So I just pulled them and gave them to the girls. This is my strawberry asparagus bed and it has been taken over by weeds. These weeds are about to go to seed. I'm gonna take a minute, maybe five, 10, 15, I don't know, and I'm gonna pull all of those. The black 
blackberry in here. I don't know if you can tell, but that is 100% better. These fronds here are not weeds. This is asparagus. So we got the tall weeds out. It still looks messy, but I can see the strawberry plants again, which is a huge, huge, huge win. Awesome. It's not very hot out here today. It's only like 75, I think, but it's humid. It rained for the first time yesterday in probably a month, month and a half. So it's really humid out here and we're not used to humidity around here. So one thing is I should have worn my boots, not my sandals. I didn't realize how dirty this was gonna be today. And so I'm gonna rinse my feet off and we're gonna get to harvesting again. Enough weeding, even though I have more weeding we're gonna do today, but I wanna get to something fun. This is where we were just harvesting earlier. And I have a few cabbages in this cabbage patch that need to be harvested. Again, the red cabbages are really little and I'm gonna let them grow a little bit more. We have our cilantro here. So this is probably about, I'm gonna say, well, you know, I don't know if I should wait to harvest it till it all turns brown or that's what our coriander, our cilantro turns into coriander. But what I was coming in here to show you are these beautiful, beautiful cabbages. Whatever variety of cabbage this is, very, very little bug damage. They have good size and I'm excited to harvest them. These little green ones, I'm gonna go ahead and harvest too because it looks like they're trying to bolt, which means produce a flower. And then I'm also gonna pull the weeds. You know, I think I'm gonna harvest this cilantro I think I'm gonna do it. I wish you could smell this coriander. It smells incredible, absolutely incredible. And I think this is a good time to harvest it because even though they're not all the way dry, a bunch of the seeds are falling on the ground. So I probably should have harvested this a little bit ago, but that's okay. This is kind of an experiment to see how it works. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? Let me go grab that brown paper bag to put all of, oh yeah, <laughs> the seeds are falling all over my cabbages. Let's see, try to somewhat, oh, they're falling all over in that bag. So this is a good idea if I can make it work. I'm losing a lot of seeds. Okay, there we go. Wow, we lost a lot of seeds, that's okay. I think to get rid of some of this bulk, I'm gonna ch chop, chop that off if I, uh-oh. Where'd I put my knife? 
Oh shoot. Here's more. Friends, where did I put my knife? Oh no. Oh no. Okay, I'll be back. I gotta find my knife. I found my knife and I just cut the extra organic material off of these cilantro plants. We probably lost about 50% of the seed on the ground in this cabbage thing. That's okay, this is an experiment. We're gonna see how well it works and we're gonna taste test it together. We're gonna cook with it. Maybe we'll make like some sort of, I don't know. Maybe I'll Google like a coriander recipe, like a, a curry or something really yummy like that. Before I'm totally done in this bed, I wanna get in here and get some of these really big weeds that I haven't been able to get to. These are massive. This is right where I harvested all the cabbage. I'm gonna leave these cabbages in here as weed barrier, just so we don't get tons of weeds in this bed. These are the peas that are done. Two beds cleaned up and harvested. This looks so much better. We cleaned up all the really tall weeds. We got the coriander out. So the walkway looks nicer. There are a few more weeds on the ground, but that's okay. This bed is done. I wanna do something a little bit easier for a minute because I'm getting toasty. So I grabbed another basket and we're gonna to harvest tomatoes, tomatillos, zucchini, and green beans and I carried the hose over here because I want to water this area and I want to harvest before I water this whole area the tomatillos tomatoes and my winter squash patch over there are not on irrigation so they haven't been watered in a week but they still look like they're doing pretty well tomatillos last in the fridge for a really long time so I don't have to preserve these up right away the ones I harvest, hopefully I'll be able to get a couple harvests and then make a big batch of salsa verde. That's all the tomatillos we got, but there's quite a few tomatoes in here. These are the Juliet tomatoes and I'm so happy with them. I had a patient tell me about these. And there's a lot in here. They're the first variety to ripen for me. I think I'm gonna go ahead and pick the ones that are blushing and I'll let these ripen on the counter. I will be here tomorrow, but I'm not gonna focus on tomatoes. And that way, throughout the week, as they ripen, I can enjoy some tomatoes. Because we're gonna be preserving a lot of stuff up so I'm not going to come down here probably for a few days after tomorrow. Now it's time to water. No fancy water system for this area. I just use my cattle panel and my hose. We're going to water the winter squash first and then we'll water the tomatoes and tomatillos. The tomato patch we were just in is over there, and now we're at our other tomato patch. This is our mostly Roma tomatoes, our determinate tomatoes, and I saw a few that were blushing in here, so I'm gonna grab these.
these plants are doing so well. I want to prop them up though. I don't want them on the ground. This one I'm going to let continue to ripen. Let's see what else we see. I know I saw more in here, but look at how many tomatoes are on this plant. It's incredible. It's amazing. These two tomatoes have blossom end rot, which is a calcium deficiency, or it can be too much watering, I think. I know that's not the case, so I'm gonna give these to the chickens. I'm gonna get a bunch of herbs to dehydrate this afternoon. This is our basil. I have not yet uh, harvested enough for a year's worth of basil, but our first frost date is usually November 19th. Excuse me, November 9th. So we'll bring this home and we'll put this in the food dehydrator right when we get home. I think we need to harvest some of our peppers as well. Oh, that's a weed. My goodness. Our poppies are so pretty. I wonder if I could harvest the seeds and get poppy seeds out of here. Oh, wow, they're super small. I could probably save seeds to plant, but not to have poppy seeds. Look how small those seeds are. I want to get some of these Chinese five color peppers. You can see they start as purple. You know, I think I'm going to let them turn to red. So we'll wait. Maybe tomorrow I'll harvest them. We have this plant here. So, so pretty. It's a weed. Basil is one of those plants. The more you harvest it, the more it will produce. And so I want to try to use that natural ability of the plant for my benefit. So hopefully we're going to get a lot more basil off that plant. The sun's coming out so I got to put this in the shade. When you're harvesting basil or when you're growing basil you really don't want it to go to flower because then it will get bitter. So that's why you want to keep picking, picking, picking. Do you see right there where there's the two little leaves coming out? Those will all produce more branches. And look at this carnation. How pretty is that in this nasturtium? My lemon basil has already gone to seed and so it's gonna be bitter. So I'm gonna let it stay in the garden though because the bees love, love it and it smells divine. Just run your hand along it. Yum, 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 yum. Let me show you another really cool thing in the garden. These sunflowers are living their best life. They're just so beautiful. I've never grown sunflowers like that before. I can't believe what I'm finding in this pepper bed. Look at our poblano peppers. They're so big. Oh my goodness, I'm so happy about that. I'm gonna let them grow a little bit more. Oh, you know what, maybe we'll take three of them. Just so that, look at that. That is incredible. Yay. And then I did figure out what kind of peppers these are. These are my peach sugar rush peppers. The most prolific pepper plant I've ever grown. This was a gift from one of you in my P.O. box. And we picked peaches together the other day. I'm going to make peach hot sauce with these peach peppers. But they need to grow a little bit more and ripen. They're gonna turn a nice orange color. 
but we can get these jalapenos in the meantime. When I was over here a second ago, I saw some peppers that needed to be harvested. So I picked a couple of them right here. Look at that one. I can't believe Anytime I grow a pepper, I'm shocked. I'm just, I can't believe that I grew some peppers. Now there's a bad spot on that, but I don't care. I'll just cut it off. Yay, I can't believe I grew peppers. Very hard for me to grow peppers in this garden, I, I'm telling you. So anytime I can, I'm even one pepper off one plant is a huge, huge win. And you wanna know what's crazy? is every single one of these pepper plants in the garden, I started from seed with you. We did it together. I just realized that. And all but like four of the tomato plants in the garden, we started together as well. Talk about a huge accomplishment. Not that you can't be a gardener if you buy starts. That's not at all what I'm implying. It just adds another level of complexity when you are starting from seed yourself and wow oh my goodness <gasps> there's so many peppers on this plant amongst this weedy mess <laughs> there is like seven peppers they're little but i don't care that doesn't matter there'll still be a pepper that we can eat look at all those peppers in there oh my gosh friends and i'm also going to get in here and i'm going to clean up all these weeds this is a tear. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Look at what we grew from seed together as well. It's a peachy carnation. <gasps> so pretty. And look what I found over here. This is a jalapeno plant, I think. And look how many jalapenos are on this teeny tiny plant. It can't even stand up straight. So let's get all these weeds. And then we'll have the satisfaction of picking those two jalapeno plants. I hate this grass weed, whatever it is. It's so invasive and noxious. Chickens will enjoy it though. Oh, I'm getting dirt all over my veggies. That even looks better. We're not supposed to be harvesting potatoes until tomorrow. That's incredible. We'll harvest the rest of that plant tomorrow. Look how much better that looks. So we just reclaimed a whole nother bed and I cleaned up down here too. I didn't show it before, but this was all that invasive grass right here. So it looks a lot better. So now we get the satisfaction of harvesting all those jalapenos. I have never grown so many jalapenos in my life, much less jalapenos that I started the plants myself. <laughs> I can't even tell you how amazing of a feeling this is. I've been seeing a lot of Instagram reels lately about how, you know, we shouldn't exercise because like in the 90s with diet culture and everything that you know, I even felt this way. The reason we exercised was to improve the way we looked, right? It was more for aesthetic purposes than necessarily mental health or general health in general. And I was thinking about that today as I've been out here working, thinking, you know, I garden for produce, right? I garden for food. That is one of the ultimate goals, right? There is something that's incredibly um, satisfying about growing your own food, plus it tastes better and it's more nutritious. You can grow a million different varieties of things that you can't buy at the grocery store, but I don't just garden for food. I garden for mental health. I garden for being in nature, for exercise, goes back to mental health. There are so many factors why I spend time in the garden other than just 
trying to produce food for Josh and I. Anyway, I was just thinking about that, that there's more to gardening because yes, I could go to Walmart and buy these jalapenos for a whole lot less cheaper than what I have invested in this garden. But I wouldn't trade it for the world. I also was thinking if this is any indication of the size of potatoes we're getting tomorrow when we do our big potato harvest, I am going to be one happy camper. All of the waste in quotes that we harvested today, like the weeds and the cabbages, let me show you how much that ended up producing for the chickens to play with. There was no green in this chicken coop when we got here this morning and look how tall that is. That is probably a good solid two and a half feet tall and now they get to enjoy eating that, playing in that, pecking at it and it's a great nutrition but it's also good fun and enrichment for them. It gives their little brain something to do. Isn't that right, little Bo Peep? Now we're gonna harvest some eggs. Hey girls, hey girls. Today's egg harvest, and I just gave them fresh bedding, so they are nice and clean. And I saw one more thing that we can harvest. Well, there's a lot more things we can harvest, but only one more thing I'm, well, no. I think I'm gonna leave it. We'll let it get a little bit bigger and we'll harvest that beautiful yellow squash tomorrow. So tomorrow's project is to clean this bed and this bed and harvest all the onions and potatoes. I'm not sure what I was thinking putting all these peppers on this in this basket with the tomatoes. It's gonna crush them. I didn't think we were gonna get so many peppers. So I'm gonna put these over here. And I'm also gonna crush that basil, which I don't wanna do. We did this together, friends. This was our efforts in a little bit of nature, well, a lot of nature. I shouldn't say it, none of my efforts. I don't know, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> Since it's my friend's birthday, I thought I would see if I could harvest a bouquet from my garden for her for tonight. I was gonna go buy flowers for her, but let me go get my knife. You know, this red one doesn't really go. I think I'll keep that one for myself. So in here we have zinnias, rebecca. I think that one doesn't really match either. So we're gonna take that one out. Status, yarrow. When I first started gardening two and a half years ago, I was not interested in growing flowers at all. My whole focus was growing vegetables. Well, I found Nicole at Flower Hill Farm. She has a YouTube channel and she has greatly inspired me to grow more flowers. Flowers are so beneficial to the garden. Not only do they create amazing beauty, it's also a whole nother skill set to learn growing flowers versus vegetables, but they're fantastic for the pollinators. So the more flowers and color and pollen you have in your garden, the more likely you're going to get more produce out of your garden. And I learned all about these different types of flowers and the confidence to grow these flowers from Nicole at Flower Hill Farm. Here is the harvest. One full basket of peppers, sweet and hot an entire basket of celery, a ton of tomatoes, cucumbers, basil, and green beans, lots of eggs, way more cabbage than I would have expected, a beautiful bouquet, and coriander seeds. So now we get to load this all up, and I need to go home and preserve some of that basil. So productive, so enjoyable, it's getting hot, Tomorrow we're gonna to be here bright and early harvesting all the onions and potatoes and taking back a couple more beds because they are crazy overgrown with weeds. But we took back one, two, three, four beds today, which is awesome. I'm super, super thrilled with that productivity and all this harvest. I need to get this inside before it starts to wilt like I am. I definitely need to wear long pants tomorrow because my legs are super, super itchy from walking through all the weeds and the tomatoes and everything. 
And that's why we're gonna be here bright and early in the morning before it gets too hot. So time to load up all of this produce. had a little stove. Oh! No, 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 no. Come here. Let's see. We had a little st stowaway. I want to put him in with the rest of the cabbage where it's nice and moist to continue to eat the bugs in the garden. Let's see. No, 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 no. Here, right in here. Right in here. There you go. You'll enjoy it in here better. There you go. Last basket. I have the water off. I've been known to leave that on. Look at this. I thought it was a snake. <gasps> it's our first red noodle bean. Oh my goodness. There's a ton of them. Well, no, there's four, but uh, we're successful. Ew, it's mushy. All right, let's see what this tastes like. Wow. It's not very good. Well, no, I'll take that back. Wow. It's sweet, but it kind of tastes like a radish more than a green bean, but like a sweet radish, if that makes any sense. Hmm just spotted a bunch more and I'm a little hungry so let's go check one thing out real quick I don't know if the apples are ready to harvest yet but they're getting really big on this one tree so I thought let's see if we could harvest one and have a little snack I've been eyeing these ones for a couple weeks now they're like the perfect specimen of an apple Let's give it a try. I still have that red noodle bean flavor in my mouth. Mmm. Eatable. Pretty tart. Woo! Should not have picked it yet. All loaded up and ready to go put it in the refrigerator to preserve up this weekend.